Hello from the lovely and beautiful Merida, Mexico. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. Mine was outstanding. And as it turns out, the little attack you saw launched on the Ralph Amell, the little feminist frequency flavored attack was planned. It was planned in group chats and promoted, all for the simple hope that the Ralph Amell would have a relapse. Now, I don't know how deep it goes if everybody was in on that planning, but I'm here to tell you there is no relapse. My life is going great. Maybe a month or two ago it might have happened, but you know, I've been given some great gifts, maybe the greatest gift that I've ever received in my life over the last month, and it's muy rica, I have to say. And so there ain't shit throwing me off my grind, ladies and gentlemen. There ain't a damn thing cringy gay can do there ain't a damn thing anybody in the states can do you can't knock this train off course there's nothing stopping this i don't care how many videos i don't care how many releases i don't care how many times you tie me up outside of this job i'm never fucking stopping not for one fucking second join me today live on rumble live on the kill stream we got a lot to go over including elijah schaefer's comments positive comments about the Ralph Amell. I'd love to talk to him soon. And I'll talk to you guys soon. As in right now, live from Merida, Mexico on the Kill Stream. It is 2.29 p.m. Eastern in the United States. 1.29 p.m. Eastern here in Merida, Mexico. Broadcasting to you live from the world headquarters of the Kill Stream on a Monday afternoon. It's good to be back. We didn't have a show yesterday, but we did do something on Locals. So shout out to several of you that I saw over on Locals, killstream.locals.com. I'm going to be off this Sunday again, but I'm going to try to pop in and do another Locals at least 30 minutes to an hour on Sunday, trying to get that established. k Fuhrer 420 sent $5 on Rumble. LFG, you only get haters when you're somebody. See then cope True. homos clean living, target missed, fuck you haters. Thank you, Enjoy brother. your nothing. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. And we're already 24% of the way there on the all day fund. Powerchat.live slash the Ralph Retort Rumble Rants there, which were been uh which were used by Kafer and a couple others during the opening where we had a few extra songs. Thanks to you guys. Killstream.live slash tip dollar sign sunset squad on Cash App. If you'd like to use Checkya, checkya.com slash killstream slash pay me. Also hyper chats over on Odyssey. Shout out to Odyssey. Shout out to D Live. I hope you guys had a wonderful and outstanding holiday weekend. I saw you guys for most of it, so I won't belabor the point, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh-oh. Kagmike just gifted one subscription on Yes, Kick. and you know what? That always reminds me, whenever he does that, that we have Kick subs as well, and shout out to Kick. Hello to Kick. I hope you guys are doing well. I had an interesting uh, holiday. As I usually do. I, my life's pretty interesting. Maybe a little too interesting sometimes. But there was a, a planned a planned play on the Ralph Amell. I can't say uh, I was totally uh, caught by surprise because I, I, you know, I kind of expect these things. Being around so long, um, and you have certain days that are, you know, Thanksgiving, these big days, these big releases. I, I wasn't surprised. Uh, and I don't know how... Uh, deep it goes, you know, who all was in on uh, the hopes there. But we do have proof that they were sitting around in a group chat uh, trying to spread this message, trying to and, and ruminating and hoping that I would have a relapse over whatever gay op they got going on. And I'm here to tell you I did not. I'm still 100% sto sober. Not sober. <laughs> I don't know what sober means, but sober... <laughs> Sober, except for cigarettes. Uh, and I only have one more cigarette today because I'm trying to cut back uh, on my smoking. So uh, that is the one caveat. If you count cigarettes, if you count caffeine, I'm actually having a Red Bull today. Ah, delicious. Not 18 Red Bulls like Fat Ass Up North has. Just one single Red Bull. Although I do have another one, but I'll probably save that. Kino Gay Sisters Seething. Yeah, it was Kino Gay. It was Kino Gay and his uh, weird, uh, I'll try to curb my language uh, since we're on kick, weird freakazoid crew there. And you can literally see it. I wonder if I can find the tweet. I put it out on the Killstream account. And they just knew this was going to be um, the thing that pushed me over the edge. And, of course, you know, dropping the artifice, dropping the 
uh, perform. This is a show, right? This entertainment show. Uh, but dropping any uh, shit talk or jokes or anything like that. Of course, uh, nobody likes to um, have their personal life, you know, strewn strewn out into the street uh, and going through that. But I'm pretty used to it. <laughs> I'm pretty used to it. So that's one good thing. Uh, at least that I am fairly used to it, and you know, it wasn't it's it's not something you enjoy, um, but I'm in a good place. You know, I said this on my little promo there for the show today, which we have a lot of stuff to cover. Curtis Yarvin's going to be on tomorrow. He reconfirmed again today. Dingo might pop in at some point today. Doctor Dingo's crypto corner uh, taking off. I wish I'd have bought into flying avocado cat, but I did not because it's up like 60% or some shit. I don't know. It's up a lot. It's up a lot. Um, but nobody, nobody likes that. You know, maybe in late September uh, or, you know, early October, that something, you know, um, of the nature that these gay oppers pulled and promoted, that may have thrown me askew. That may have thrown me off track. But this last month has just been nothing but wins, nothing but good stuff in my life. Uh, major gift, uh, major gift having this audience here uh, as well to support me every day. And just a lot of good vibes, uh, a lot of good vibes all around. People seeing I dropped the weight, a lot of positive comments about that. Um, you know, the sobriety, a lot of positive comments about that. And believe it or not, your positive, your positive comments help a lot uh, because I stopped reading most negativity but it's still out there and you still know it's out there uh and i've been guilty in my career of focusing too much on the negativity i saw k first saying this the other day that's that's a problem that i have although i haven't been doing it lately but every little positive comment every um you know supporter and viewer and people cheering me on even outside uh, of the killstream audience means a lot it means a lot and it may not seem like it when you fire off a a little tweet or DM or something like that. And I don't get back to all of them and I apologize, but I see uh, almost all of them. And I realize the black PR machine that is out there to um, promote every, uh, you know, bullshit thing said about me and every true thing said about me too. <laughs> so uh, there's a whole machine of people and they're really crestfallen. We mentioned Kino Gay, but he's got a bunch of losers who follow him around and they're really upset that I'm sober. And you see them, of course, their group chat got leaked uh, and a bunch of other shit, but you can see them openly rooting for my relapse. And we made fun of Worski last week, and we'll still joke about him uh, for getting back in the snow. But I didn't sit here and wish for him to get back in the snow as much as I hate Andy Worski. Uh, you never heard me say that on air. Now, we did roast him. We did make fun of him uh, last week. That's true. So I don't want to take a huge moral high ground here. But I don't, I don't sit around and, and hope for stuff like that. Now, if it happens, will we laugh about it? Will we comment on it? Yeah. But sitting there and seething to somebody or about somebody to the degree that you're actually like praying for this guy's relapse, uh, you're praying for, you know, certain people not to be able to see their uh, family, um, to wish them dead in some cases. I mean, I, I guess that's more understandable to me. <laughs> wishing somebody dead than wishing for their relapse or wishing for them not to be able to see their family. That's just bizarre behavior that means you probably got a screw or two loose. Uh, and I've had a screw or two loose here and there, uh, so I can spot it. <laughs> so I can spot it. Uh, and it's very bizarre. Uh, and these people who built... Uh, their whole internet personalities, in Kina Gay's case, around being uh, an errand boy for a pedophile named Flamenco and being his fanboy and being in his Discord filled with lollycon and freaks of assorted varieties uh, and only turned on Flamenco after he got tossed out onto his ass. And if you know something about Kina Gay, he's a supreme autistic weirdo. And he used to be in my chat back in the day, and he said something I didn't like, and I banned him. And he begged me for months to put him back in chat. And I told him to fuck off and was kind of threatening. He's like, oh, you better put me back in chat. You better do this and that. I'm like, no, who the fuck are you talking to? And so this guy 
has been attacking me ever since because I banned him in a chat room. That's literally the reason. <laughs> That's literally the reason this guy watched the kill stream every day. He was in the chat all the time and he said some shit about my personal life I didn't like. I forgot what it was now. I don't remember because I don't keep up. Like it's It happens and then it's done. Like I don't, I have so much shit going on. I don't have time to, to remember that shit. But this is Keenegay. This is the guy who then dedicated his life basically to me and to a, sm a smaller extent, Flamenco, because that was his daddy. That was his real internet daddy that he hung around in Discord. See, I don't really, we have a Discord. I need to go in there more, and I apologize for you, for those of you in there. It's $5 a month or whatever level, and if you're not in there, message me on Telegram at Killstream. I want to do some watch bar, at least one or two for the holidays, so update there, but I don't sit around and talk to people, not because I don't like them. I talk to some people individually, but I just don't have time. I don't have time, and usually that shit, um, if you stay around situations like that too long, it ends up being super gay and all kinds of fucking you know, weirdos like Kina Gay himself uh, start hanging around. And I learned years and years ago that you should get in and get out uh, and things like discords and private chats and so I don't have a group chat. I mean, we have a Telegram chat, we have a Discord, but I don't sit in there and plan stuff. When I post something on Telegram, it reposts in the group chat, and every once in a while I'll jump in there and talk. But for the most part, I just let it go because um, organizing like that is always uh, a mistake. <laughs> it's always a mistake, and it always uh, invites in uh, weirdos and people who think they're going to run some op and leak this or do that. So it's just it's just a loser all around. Um, speaking of losers, uh, the losers praying on my downfall will have to keep praying and they'll have to keep hoping for the hall. And my holidays are already stacked. I've already planned out a hellacious holiday season IRL and I'm working on the show as well. And we already got several guests scheduled. Yarvin tomorrow, Wednesday up in the air, Thursday, Ron Unz. Talking to some other people. Dingo versus Aiden Projects on Saturday night. A Hall of Fame return in the works. And I had it. We don't have the day confirmed. I'm hoping for Pearl Harbor Day. A day which will live in infamy. Um, I'm hoping for Pearl Harbor Day. But it's not set just yet. Although the Hall of Fame returnee did uh, say that they were down. Uh, to come back on the kill stream. But, you know, until I have that finalization, that final missive, then I won't be able to, then I won't be able to uh, announce it fully. But I will say a Hall of Fame level return in the works on the kill stream. Now, there's only one official member of the Hall of Fame. That's Dick Masterson because we didn't do the gimmick again. But there are several other, I'd say 10 to 15 others who would be in the Hall of Fame if I had continued inducting people, which I will at some point, maybe 2024. That might actually be a good, uh, a good gimmick to bring back early 2024. But uh, this is an undisputed Killstream Hall of Famer. Hasn't been on the show in a while, but has agreed to come back and we don't have the finalization, like I said. So I can't give you any more than that. I mean, I could, but I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it completely, but a Hall of Fame level player uh, coming back to the kill stream field here. Back on the pitch. Uh, Chief of Staff said to mention this about Keena Gay before I forget. So everybody knows he's a loser. Everybody knows he's a fucking weirdo freak. And they even know that at Kiwi Farms. Because he's been banned on there two or three times. And that says a lot, by the way. Such a cringe fucking loser. They're like <laughs> promoting his shit on there and being obvious about it and being a weirdo freak with his fake news bullshit. And he's been banned on there a couple times. Josh despises him. I don't blame him. And he was so eager to post something about Ted. Red Pill Gang, that he posted this. And again, I don't, I've read plenty of Kiwi Farms, but I very rarely ever been logged in. I have an account from years ago, but it's been a long time since I've been logged in. 
But apparently, I think it shows his picture there in the bottom corner or some shit that shows that that's his profile. I'm not sure. Uh, but this outs him as having AstroTurf the thread yet again. That's all these people can do. Like, there can't be real buzz. There can't be, you know, actual, you know, content that moves people. Actual... Uh, stuff that gets people worked up. They have to astroturf. They have to get in their group chats and give their talking points out like they're the fucking RNC. And please boost this and please boost that. It's all fucking bullshit. It's all fucking bullshit. And it's been getting exposed. And the longer I stay sober and the longer I stay killing it, all the personal life stuff is still going to happen. There's still going to be releases on that front. I'm sure of it. I'm dead certain of it. I know that for a fact because no matter what anybody says, it's hard to leave this motherfucker. And when you know this loud mouth is out there talking every day and he's living good and he's living clean, that bothers some people. That bothers some people and they don't like seeing that or, and I can't read people's minds, you know, I can't say for sure, or they just want to come back and, be in the limelight. Get the dopamine. Get their story out there. Feminist frequency flavored, uh, as I said earlier. Tell their truth. Give their update. And that'll keep happening from people I've had in my life on down the line. I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I just mean in general. Because I'm addicted. The Ralph of male may cause addiction problems, as we've seen. They can't give me up easily. You know, I talk about quitting cigarettes. It's a lot easier to quit cigarettes than it is to quit the Ralph Amell, as you've seen. Because if they really wanted to quit, they would just quit. They would just go away, and they would shut up. Now, they don't have to. Nobody has to. You know, you can say whatever you want. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. But the proof is in the pudding. A Smaster 33 sent $1 on Rumble. Breaking news. Kinochet fucks guys and probably kids. Uh, you know, that wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me. But it's not even, thank you for that. It's not even a personal attack. It's just the truth. You know, people say they don't want this. People are like, oh, I don't. It's so nasty. Which it is. It is nasty. I couldn't blame anybody for saying, you know what, I want to go do something else. Or I just want to be a private citizen or this. I don't blame people for that, whether they were in my life or not. I am intimately familiar with how fucking nutty this shit is and how many ramifications it can have in your real life and all that. I know all about it. So I would never, even people I may have disagreements with or whatever, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame them to, if they decided to leave the scene, quote unquote. But they don't. They don't ever leave the scene, really. At least I haven't seen it yet. You know, maybe I, maybe I'm gonna be surprised one of these days. But and you know, if I thought really hard, maybe I could think of one or two examples. Maybe like Zanan. Uh, but they don't come to mind easily. They don't come to mind easily because once you get into this, once you're used to the responses, once you're used to being around me. Uh, I'm a lightning rod, and whatever I do, man, probably the rest of my life is going to be followed and talked about, no matter what level I'm at. And that can definitely be annoying, but it can also be addicting. It can also be addicting because you know if you come out and say something about me, the people who don't like me will get in their group chats and gay op it and try to promote it to harm me. You know that people who used to like you, at least some of them, or used to hate you, at least some of them, will now say you're the greatest person ever and they're so happy, you know, you're against me now. And that's the way it'll always be. That's the way it'll always be. And I can live with it. Certain people can't or say they can't. So, and again, it's not even personal. Like I'm not taking shots at anybody or speaking about anybody directly. 
this is just a phenomenon that I've noticed, specifically over the last three years, but really over the last eight. Uh, and there aren't too many examples otherwise. Although uh, my first ex-wife actually is a pretty good example. Uh, Nora did kind of go away too. Uh, so there's a couple of examples here and there, but can you really think of too many others? Who, Gator? Other names that I won't throw out there? Like, these people don't go away. They sit around and seethe about me 24-7 and try to figure out timed releases to try to fuck with me or throw me off my game. And maybe, that you know, some people have good reason not to like me. <laughs> That's fair, right? Like, I, I'm not even commenting on the merits, although a lot of them don't, but whatever. Um, I'm just commenting on the phenomenon. All right, now that was completely off the top of my head, and I didn't know where I was going to go with that. I better, I better cut it a little because I'm trying to take a bird's eye view of the situation and not comment on specifics, rather just the phenomenon uh, in general. And it's really not just one person. It's a, it's many different examples. So. You know, Thanksgiving and this gay op and all that, you know, motivated me to talk about the phenomenon. But there's many such cases. Many such cases. Norris coming to co-host the show next week. That would be a hell of a surprise. That would be a Hall of Fame level return. I mean, you'd have to consider her a Hall of Famer since she helped co-found the show. But no, that's not happening. <laughs> I would do it, though, because it would be content and entertaining. Uh, it would be funny to hear her chastise me. <laughs> I can imagine a few of her sentences already right off top. Uh, I can think of a couple she might let loose. <laughs> it would be entertaining. It would be in her British accent, too, so it would be good. But, yeah, I could imagine... I could imagine she'd have a few things, a few things to say. Now that would be entertainment. Unlike some women I've had on here, she was actually, and not all, you know, sometimes even uh, the others could do good here and there or on location, et cetera. But as far as uh, studio, like co-host, uh, I would say that was uh, one of the best uh, examples of rapport. Of course, we were married. <laughs> So that makes sense, too. But, uh, yeah, we had a pretty good back and forth on air, and she loved to chastise me on air. So uh, Hetero Hour says, Nora was my favorite Ralph waifu. Well, I won't get into all that. I won't, I won't rank any. I won't do anything like that. But Okay, also my phone is vibrating. What is even going on here? <sighs> okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Nor getting top build by the chat she is. Uh, in terms of co-hosts, though, yeah, she's in the top cut. Um, hers and Anne, Bibble. Uh, Perspicacity, of course, in the chat. But, yeah, I'd have to put her in the top cut. I'd have to put her in the top cut. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to show this, too. There's plenty of stuff to show. I'm not going to show it all. I know Chief of Staff probably wants me to show it all. But this is, this is cringe gay on his sock account on Kiwi Farms, which they hate him. Can you believe Noel wants to get rid of this form with gold dropping like this every few weeks? I like this. I, I guess Josh was talking about getting rid of the form. I didn't see, but um, Chief of Staff explained this to me. So I guess he was talking about getting rid of my form on Kiwi Farms. And this pissed Kendra Gay off. I know that that's shocking that that would piss him off. But it did. Please don't do it. It's years of history. He hasn't even been sober for a whole month. Uh, well, actually, it was a month, almost a month and a half. No, it was a month and a half at that point. And now it's two and a half months since you wrote that, Cringe Gay. So keep hoping, keep, keep praying. And I saw you in your group chat. Oh, it's going to happen. Oh, Ralph's going to have a relapse. Oh, it's going to happen. The good days will be back again. If only he'll take a drink. If only he'll have a pill. It must be sad. Please, no. It's history. Like, autists talking back and forth. 
<laughs> about me, well over half of it untrue. Uh, another 25, 30% just speculation. Maybe like 15 to 20% actual truth or things that happened. Oh, no. Oh, no. Please don't delete it. Oh, no. All my hard work will be for nothing if you delete the forum. Oh, Josh, please. <laughs> what an absolute fucking loser. What an absolute fucking loser. Somebody said he lives in South America in the chat. That wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me. No wonder he's jealous of me living in Mexico. There's a lot of people in South America who would love to live in Mexico and who do try to get to Mexico, as a matter of fact, and try to set up shop here, much less the United States. I was just reading an article about that the other day. So if he does actually live in South America, that would explain a lot. That would explain a lot because this is like the lap of luxury compared to most of South America. <laughs> Literally, by the way. It is tough. It's tough in some areas down there. Coco Berry says, yeah, he does. Well, that would explain a lot. Why he idolizes Dame Pesos and all this. Yeah, that would explain a lot. I couldn't say for sure. He kind of uh, words his syntax like an ESL type dumbass. So that wouldn't that wouldn't really surprise me. I couldn't say for sure because uh, I don't know. But some people in the chat think they know, and it wouldn't surprise me. He hasn't even been sober for a whole month yet. <laughs> oh, my God. He's getting rid of the gun for him? What? And this is him on his Feaser account. I can't wait till Feaser comes back and just drops bombs. He's hinting that he might be dropping some bombs directly on Kinoche, which I support 100%. I hope he goes all out. I hope that's what I think it is. Probably isn't, but... I really hope it's what, what I think it is because that would really make me smile. That would be a hell of a Christmas gift, whether it comes before or after. And I would just celebrate like Jesus himself came back. <laughs> Not my gut for him. That's right. <laughs> anyway, I didn't even know they were talking about getting rid of it. So I got handed these. Uh, and Cringe Gay docks his account by accident. But I didn't even know that was on the table. But apparently it is. Apparently it is. So we'll see. I don't I don't have a thought on it either which way. I haven't been paying attention. I, I see the stuff on Twitter. And people send me stuff and, and things like that. But I haven't been reading it at all uh, since September 4th. So I haven't been reading it. I had another stretch earlier this year. I just stopped. Uh, I don't feel like... Um, I don't feel like that's beneficial, really. Uh, and anything I need to know, uh, chief of staff will let me know. So, a, sm a smaster no, thirty-three wait. sent one dollar on Rumble. Total Canus Big Death. No, no, we want him to live long. Who's gonna be the most autistic motherfucker on the planet? Being totally cringe and hanging around with pedophile friends like Flamenco. Alleged, alleged pedophile friends like Flamenco. Um, now we want him to live uh, a long and healthy life. Not as long as me, but maybe like six months. Close to that. Close to that. Tom Pappert says, There's nothing embarrassing happening to you nowadays, Ralph. Must be uniquely boring to cyberstalk someone who just stacks W's. Yeah. Um, well, and these people got used to... I mean, I was fucked up uh, several... The first three or four months of the year, had a good run... Fucked up again in July. Fucked up again at the end of August. First week of September. But other than that, I've been... I mean, those are pretty big fuck-ups, to be fair. But... <laughs> to be fair, they were kind of colossal misfires. But uh, I've been sober uh, for large stretches of this year. And I think the fall sobriety uh, really took some people by surprise. Because they were just convinced. And, you know, it was hard. I ain't going to lie. Especially September was a slog. And they were convinced I was going to curl up into a ball and get back on the bottle, get back on the pills, let the nonsense for my personal life. Um, that has something to do with me, obviously. I'm not discounting everything I've said in the past um, or trying to shift responsibility or anything like that, but just hoping 
that that would send me over the edge, send me back into the devil's elixir, and it hasn't. It hasn't. I've stuck with the weight loss. I've stuck with a lot of good things, other good things coming into my life as well. I don't have a reason to feel that way. And even if I did, I wouldn't do it just out of spite because I know how bad these motherfuckers want it. I know how bad they want it. And they can't have it. And farewell, typical, you're a loser. <laughs> farewell to you and chat on cringe gaze, alt account. Farewell, confiscate his coat. Uh, but that's my opening segment. That's my opening segment. Powerchat.live slash the Ralph Retort. Killstream.live slash tip. Dollar sign Sunset Squad on Cash App. What else? Checkit.com slash Killstream slash pay me. Uh, whatever else is on there. Rumble rants. Those for sure. We got a couple of those. Yeah, he got swept. Yeah, he got swept. He did have an appropriate name. That's true, Sigma. He did have a very appropriate name. Okay. So that's the open. I thought that was appropriate and bombastic. Of course, it had a little taste of that. But I'm trying to speak honestly and um, not just throw out everything I said, even if I... You know, I have a comment here or there, or, you know, you get fired up. You have to get fired up to do this for a living. But I haven't forgotten everything I've been through or taken my uh, share of the blame, which is most of the share. Like, I have the biggest share <laughs> by far. Uh, so I'm not recanting uh, on anything, but that also doesn't mean uh, I'm going to roll over and play dead for people who want to see me roll over, who want to see me fail, who have their own personal reasons, who have their own cringe autistic reasons like Kina Gay, because I'm not. Because I'm not. And you cannot like me. You can have reasons not to like me, but I ain't rolling over. And I said this on Twitter, but the only thing taking me the fuck out of here is the fucking morgue. And if you want to see me go, you better fucking kill me. You better fucking kill me or you better snuff me out to such a degree that I just cannot do this anymore. And that hasn't happened and I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. And if I'm wrong, prove me wrong. Make it happen. And we'll see. 2024 is coming up. Maybe that'll finally be your year. I remember in 2018, the end of that year, they were telling me it was over. And da, 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 da. Well, it ain't. It ain't, and it won't be. All right. Now, where should I go from here? I don't even know. I don't even know. Jacuzzi, that's right. The tricks, the usual old tricks ain't working, and I saw tweets and I'm so thankful for this and that. Yeah, okay. Well, I got a lot to be thankful for too. But I won't uh I won't get into it too much. But I I've had a bountiful uh fall season and I plan on twenty twenty four being even more bountiful. And as the word gets out, as, you know, you'd be surprised. People don't pay attention to this every day. They didn't know I lost weight. They didn't know I was here sober. Even some big names. I, I told you about the Hall of Famer I was talking to, uh, about some others. Elijah Schaefer will go over these comments here in a minute. Um, you know, a lot of people don't really know uh, that I didn't uh, completely go off the rails or that I've been sober or that I lost weight or that the kill stream's still banging. So I said this, I think it was Saturday, but it's on me. That sort of thing's on me uh, to get the word out, get the promo out. That's another reason I've been doing these promos just about every day. If I have a take, I will. If not, I don't force it. I'm not some people like the fat fuck up north. Um, but I've been trying to do more promo, trying to be get, getting out there more. A smaster 33 sent $1 on Rumble. <laughs> it ain't over till t -Clip sings. Well, that's another psychopath uh, that sits around and sits is all they can do, obviously. Um, but they sit around and it's been years. It's been years for some of these people. How do you even do it? I mean, this is my job and I have a lot of fun with it. And it's an honor and a privilege uh, to be able to entertain for a living. But I, I do this for a living is the key. Part. 
This is my job. This is what I do for a living. All these interviews, and it's great to talk to all these smart people and unique people and, uh, you know, just good conversationalists. It's great. It's a hell of a life. But I do it for my job. Like, I, I couldn't imagine obsessing over. I've said this before. But I couldn't imagine obsessing over someone for years for free for no reason. And you know for a fact a lot of these motherfuckers don't have a fucking job. Some of them probably do. But a lot of them don't because they couldn't have a job and do the shit they do. I don't know. It's bizarre. It's a sad existence. I know it'll keep going. But keep praying. Maybe you'll... Maybe you'll get that relapse. You won't, but maybe. Maybe if you pray hard enough. <laughs> oh, this is what I'm talking about. You wanted the, well, one of what I'm talking about. You wanted the Ralph relapse? Well, it's about to happen. That's brutal. That's from Thanksgiving. Spoiler alert, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It hasn't happened. It's not going to happen. And that same guy, I went through his timeline after. I'd never heard of him before. I think I blocked him randomly or whatever. He said some dumb shit. But his timeline is just all about me relapsing. I'm like, oh, he's going to relapse. Look at him now. This is going to get him. It's like, like he's cheering for it. Like you would cheer for a running back to run to daylight and to the end zone. He's cheering and hoping and praying for me to have a relapse. I think it may have gotten even more dire since Worski had his relapse. And we haven't heard from him. I think it's nine days now. I haven't heard anything from him as far as I know. Fat ass keeps putting up his bullshit rant videos. But as far and got blown out by sticks. Oh, I need to check back in on that. Uh, that just reminded me. Uh, I need to check back in on sticks. Uh, uh, hold on. Okay. I forgot about that. I reminded myself. I reminded myself. 11-day hold would be done. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe it was more severe than we thought. But I'll, I'll keep up to date on it. As far as I know, he hasn't said shit. A Smaster 33 sent $1 on Rumble. <laughs> hold these L's, Ralph. Interviewing one of the smartest men alive? Cringe. Yeah, and I've said this before. And before I go to the Elijah stuff... Um, I'll say it again. Our interview lineup this fall with a ton of new guests and a ton of returning guests has been uh, something that I've been proud of for sure. And we still we have Yarvin tomorrow, Uns again on Thursday, Jim Goad on the 5th, and I'm trying to fill in some other blanks as we head into the full holiday season. I'm very proud of that. And it was done in the face of unbelievable adversity. And there's still plenty of adversity. It's not like it's gone. But I am super proud of what we put together um, in the face of people trying to shut us down and trying to get people not to show up. And there's still a lot of that, too. There's been a couple of guys, a couple of things that's fallen through. Because I'm like, oh, there's, you know, they find out I'm looking into something or talking to somebody and they go up to them and send them messages and try to get them not to come on the show. And some people are weaker than others or, or, you know, more susceptible to that type of thing. And it does happen. It does happen. Uh, so I've been very, very proud uh, of what we put together this fall. And we're not done. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.